This is CBS 8 News Live at Noon. Now, good afternoon. Hope you're staying cool. Thank you for watching. I'm Heather Myers. And I'm Netta Irampour. So right now at noon, record-setting heat wave has the state on high alert. The agency that oversees California's electrical grid warns that soaring demand could lead to blackouts. We have more on that in just a moment, but let's get to today's hot conditions. Our Evan Narani is here. Evan, yeah, this is dangerous, and it's been that way for day after day, but the changes that are coming are really shocking. Yeah, I mean, we have Hurricane K churning off of the coast of Baja, the Baja Peninsula right now, likely to bring about a 20 degree drop in those afternoon high temperatures by the time we get to the upcoming weekend. It will not make any landfall. It will veer off to the west, but it will be strong enough to give us some wet weather into the weekend. That's what our sights are set on about Friday afternoon into Saturday. However, until then, we are dealing with this heat wave going on day eight. Now we have temperatures outside right now already in the triple digits for Ramona. Ramona right now is at 101 degrees, 96 in El Cajon and Alpine, 99 right now in Escondido and Poway, 99 up in Fallbrook. So remember, pre cool your home now, preserve that energy, uh, especially once that flex alert takes effect around 4 p.m. These temperatures are going to stay hot through that time frame. Looking at the greater region, there are plenty of spots that have been in the triple digits for over an hour now. Fresno, for example, at 104 degrees, 102 two in Vegas and 100 in Phoenix. So we've got this excessive heat warning in effect all the way through your Thursday at 8 p.m. Though Friday is also going to be a hot day. But what we're keeping our sights set on is the change that we'll see in the forecast that is coming in the form of Hurricane K. It will break down off of our coast. Right now, a tropical storm watch is in effect all the way through Thursday at 8 p.m. This could be upgraded to a warming off the Mexico coastline. That is because that's where uh, Hurricane uh, K is going to be making its uh, arrival into the next couple days. Days. And then as we head toward Friday night, that's when showers and thunderstorms are expected here in San Diego. We'll go into more detail about this uh, in just a few minutes, but the heat will remain today, tomorrow and Friday. Back to you. Oh boy, Evan, thank you. Just a few more days and then the cooler weather. Now, the state's power grid has been pushed to the limit. In fact, we just got numbers from yesterday. Yeah, demand soared to a record of more than 52,000 megawatts. California's maximum is 56,000 megawatts. The heat's still on, as Evan just mentioned, and there's a possibility of rolling blackouts. CBS 8's Chris Grubb is standing by. We'll have more on what you can do to prepare if the power does go out. But we begin with CBS 8's Shannon Handy. She has more details on what's being asked of you as a flex alert is issued for the eighth day in a row. After eight straight days, I know that a lot of people are just tired of these flex alerts, but the reality is without them, we could experience those rolling blackouts. So essentially what we're all being asked to do is conserve energy between 4 and 9 p.m., which is normally when energy usage is at its highest. So it's a bit of this vicious cycle where like the heat itself causes people to use more electricity. Um, and then the heat also like makes the grid itself a little bit less efficient. So here's how it works. If the grid gets too overwhelmed, meaning we're not doing enough to conserve energy, Cal ISO will put out an energy emergency alert. Yesterday, that alert went to a level three, meaning rolling blackouts were possible. That alert did expire at 8 p.m., but could happen again. As for who would be impacted, stg &E has a list of all the areas it serves. The list is in order of which circuits it would turn off first. Here's a look at stg &E's website. You can see the circuits starting with Casa de Oro, Point Loma, Laguna Hills, and so on. stg &E says it would begin cutting power from the first half dozen circuits listed. Those circuits would be without power for about an hour and the next set of circuits would follow. As for what we all can do to conserve energy, things like don't run your dishwasher, do laundry during those peak hours. Also turn off any unnecessary lights and electronics. And if you can keep that thermostat set at 78 degrees. So what do you do if there is a blackout where you live? For more on that, we'll go over to Chris Crow. And look, it's hot out here. We we know it. We've been covering it for quite some time right now. We know it's well over 90 degrees here in El Cajon. We just saw a gentleman walk by. Uh, he had uh, water all over himself and he didn't say it was from sweating. He put the water there to cool him off. Now, the inverse of that, though, is that there are people who are enjoying their AC that may lose that due to blackouts. They also may lose some other things. So we want to make sure that everyone is staying up to date about what they can do to try to not only keep themselves cool, but also try to best prepare for that blackout. So one of the things that you can do, one of the most important things that you can keep cool, of course, is your food. So right now, before any type of outages begin, you can actually take some containers, fill them up with water, freeze them, 
get that ice and get that in the fridge to help keep anything that you have that's perishable in your fridge cold so that it doesn't go bad if you do indeed lose power. Now, if you do lose lose power, of course, you want to keep those refrigerators closed as best and as long as you can. Make sure to turn off and unplug any electrical appliances or any equipment. Keep flashlights in reach. Use those instead of candles at night. And more importantly, again, make sure that you are stocked up on food supplies for both you and your pet. Now, we know that it was a, a likely scenario yesterday that there could be blackouts. Thankfully, there were none. We all got that alert sometime just before 6 p.m. and we saw that the grid did use less power. But again, it remains a possibility today. So here's how some people in El Cajon are preparing. Flashlights. Actually, I'm not prepared even for flashlights. <laughs> we checked into a hotel. So if we have to do that, we were going to do it over the day weekend, but the prices, uh, the cost of staying in hotel shot up. And look, we know it's a balance trying to stay cool while also trying to conserve energy. At the end of the day, what you can do is try to keep cool, go to some cool zones, use some of the strategies we've been sharing, and then also prepare for any type of blackout that may occur. You can find all of the tips covering both those topics by going to CBS8.com and clicking on that story link.